Hey, what's going on everybody? So today I'm out and I'm riding with the DUI unit. We're gonna to try to start a series that we're hoping to continue. We're gonna call it the Real Reno 911. So we wanna give you kind of an insight into what it looks like to be a police officer of the Reno Police Department. So tonight I'm riding with the DUI unit. Say hi to Mike. Hey, Reno. And Adrian's over there hanging out. There we go. So we're gonna be out riding together tonight. We're gonna to go see if we can uh, find some DUIs. So we'll kind of walk you through that what everything we do in the unit, and uh, yeah, kind of what a DUI looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, we'll uh, see you in a second. All right, so when you go to the academy, you get some basic instruction on DUI, right? What does that look like? So every officer goes through a 40-hour course at the police academy. That course is sponsored by NHTSA. Um, during that course, officers are gonna learn uh, driving pattern, which typically goes hand in hand with impairment, and then the investigating part of a DUI. They're looking for it's called objective signs. So when we get to the door, we're looking for the odor of a uh, unknown alcoholic beverage coming within the vehicle, uh, the smell of burnt cannabis coming from the vehicle, slurred speech, red watery eyes, things of that nature that would show to us that somebody is not safe to be operating a motor vehicle on these roadways. So the DUI unit consists of four officers. We all work uh, modified swing in nighttime schedules, so that way there's always coverage at night times for any DUI crashes that come out or proactive patrol for reducing impaired drivers on our roadways. And is that the goal of the unit, just to target nothing but DUI driving? Yeah, that's our main job. We respond to accidents to see if those are impairment-based or when we're free, we just drive around and look for that bad driving pattern. And that goes back to all those things you're talking about, failing to maintain lane. Yeah, all that stuff. So right now we're going to an unknown crash where the last update we got was that there was a female heard screaming. So based on the uh, call, we don't know the severity of the injuries or kind of what's going on. So in cases like this, we'd like to get over there uh, quickly, obviously. That's why we're going right now with lights and sirens. So we just got on scene of that, uh, what came out as a crash, but uh, Mike, tell us a little bit about what happened with that. Got on scene and we actually found out it was just a vehicle burglary. Somebody's breaking in and the female was screaming. So, you know, in this job, we don't really know what we're going to. People call in calls all the time and they're obviously pretty amped up because it's a scary time in their life. So we don't always get all the information, which is, you know, necessarily accurate in the time being. So we get there, we assess the situation and then we, use whatever resources we need at that time. So obviously it was a vehicle burglary, so we're gonna go get back on the road and keep looking for impaired drivers. So when you're out on a night, you do a lot of traffic stops for bad driving. What, uh, are all those people impaired or what does that look like? No, they're not. So like we talked about, I'll stop people for no headlights, speeding, failing to maintain their lane. And they could just be, you know, not paying attention or just maybe a bad driver. So I like to educate them what's going on, but a lot of the times people do pass field sobriety tests. You know, we, we do these tests to make sure that their driving pattern is not caused by their impairment. And that's what these tests allow us to figure out. Wow, all over the road. Reno day one, warning plate sees traffic on another. Stuart Kerman, Nevada. So Mike, what are we stopping this car for? So this car has no headlights on and it's already getting dark out. It's in a half hour after sunset. Uh, it was speeding as well in a residential zone and it's failing to maintain its lane as well. So we'll see what's going on. How's it going, man? All right. The reason I stopped it, you got no headlights on and it's dark out now, okay? See how the city street lights are on? You gotta have your headlights on. Oh, all right. You're also speeding and you're failing to maintain your lane without using a turn signal when you're changing lanes. Oh. So you got a few things going on. Where are you coming from tonight? Coming from uh, Cal Nevada. Real day, I want to take a unit for FSTs. Actually, you just came from the grocery Okay, what's your name, sir? Bill, how much you had drink tonight? Uh, like a beer or something. Like a beer, is that more or? Beer or so. Tip. A beer or so. So how many beers total, Mr. Three. Three beers? Yeah. Okay. In any? Three hours. Three hours? Yeah. Three beers, okay. Any cannabis use tonight? No. Any other drugs or anything? No. Okay. Not at all. Uh, and this is your car? Yes. 
You know, so you know how to work the headlights and everything? Right here. There you go. Perfect. Sit tight for a second, Bill. Yep. So initially when I went up to the car, uh, I could obviously immediately smell that odor of alcohol coming from within the car. He has a very noticeable slurred speech as well. Um, so I just asked him, you know, how much you've been drinking? He tells me like one beer. So I ask a little more and eventually comes down to three beers, right? So he says over the course of three hours, sometimes when people are drinking, they kind of lose their sense of time. So we're just gonna get him out, make sure he is okay to be driving. If not, he's gonna hang out with us for a little bit longer. All right, Bill, with that driving pattern, having some alcohol, I gotta make sure you're okay to drive. How's that sound? I'm going right here. All right, well, you already drove, so come on out for me, all right? Hey, no problem. Perfect. Go ahead and face the vehicle for me, man. Put your hands on top of your head. No weapons or anything crazy on you I need to be aware about? Nope. All right, I'm just gonna check real quick, okay? Perfect, relax. Let's go right back over here on the sidewalk. Some sugar and some vanilla ice cream. Oh, nice. Yep. Um, and you live here? Yes, I do. Okay. Right in the back. Bill, do you have any sicknesses, injuries, or any chronic medical conditions I need to be aware of? Um, no, not really. Pretty healthy guy. All right. Are you diabetic, sir? I hope not. Are you diagnosed at all? No. no. I've been to the doctor. Okay. Any in your ear problems? Anything wrong with your hearing? No, just I got a I got a laceration on my leg right here. That okay. Me. Any prescription medications, sir? No. Any illicit drug use? No, you can take. Me, all right, we'll get there here in a second. Just a couple questions, all right? And cannabis use? No. None? None. Really. Do you know what road this is right here that goes north and south? Yeah, it's uh, Kerman. Kerman out. What time is it right now if you had to guess? I'd say it's around like 6 o'clock. And exactly how much have you been drinking today? I drank like three beers. Where was that at? Cal. What kind of beers? Modells. How long ago was your last beer, sir? Uh, I'd say about 40 minutes ago. All right, you hold that for me. My finger with your eyes only keeping your head straight. Do you understand that? Yep. See my finger okay right there? Yes, I do. All right, just follow it. Trying to make me dizzy or something? Just keep on it. Nope. Keep on it all the way out. All the way out for me, Bill. Follow it up with just your eyes. Keep your head still. All right, go ahead. Relax your eyes real quick, Bill. You ever done these before? Maybe. Yeah. All right, Bill, for this deep breath in tight seal and blow, I'll tell you when to stop. More, more, more. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Can you hold it for me? Yep. Thank you. I guess that too. Yep. All right, man, hands behind your back for me, Bill. Too much alcohol to be driving, man. You got no business out here driving, okay? Go ahead, separate your feet for me. What? You're 089, so you're above legal limits, sir. You have to come hang out with me for a little bit. Of... Are you serious? 100%, man. You got no business driving. 
Has the female in your car been drinking as well, sir? Is she able to drive the vehicle in there and park it? Yeah. All right, well, we'll double check that, okay? How long is this gonna happen? So we're gonna go up to the jail, do another test, and then you'll hang out there until you sober up, and you'll be out in the morning if you don't have any DUI history, okay? Left foot in, watch your seat. DUI. Have you had a DUI before in the last seven years, sir? No. All right, then, yeah, you should be out in the morning, okay? I'm gonna go talk to her real quick and let her know what's going on. I mean, so he's getting arrested for Yeah, he's got to go with me and hang out, okay? He'll and be out. For a DUI or? Yeah, yeah. So he'll be out in the morning. He will be out in the morning? He should if he doesn't have any DUI history. Did you okay. notice his driving pattern when you were in the car? Um, I didn't notice, sir. I, I, I was gambling and I didn't drink and usually he only has a couple beers. So Why aren't I you driving it. then? I don't have my license. It's suspended. Um, I just paid off my child support. Otherwise, okay. I would have. Otherwise, I would have just drove home anyway. You got some stuff to figure anyway. out. Yeah, right. No, well. I paid off the child support. I just haven't got a chance to get my marriage license and all that okay. stuff. Okay. So. Well, if you want, you can go ahead and park the car. I don't know if he has any property in here that he needs to go with him. I don't see a phone. Um, I don't. No, his phone's back at the house and everything. But um, he can just call his phone number and um, whatever. And he's got money on him and everything. So. Perfect. Do you have any questions for me, Miss? Um, no, so how long does this process usually take? Um, it depends on county up there, okay? So just call, uh, He'll call you when he's ready. So I would assume in the morning. Okay. All right. Awesome. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Me, I will. The eyes do not lie when it comes to alcohol and certain types of drugs. So we ran him through, it's called the horizontal gaze nystagmus test. Uh, we're looking for that involuntary jerking of the eyes, which is induced by a depressant, which alcohol is a depressant. So. While I was doing the eye test, I could still smell that strong odor of alcohol coming from his breath in conjunction with a slurred speech, red watery eyes, and then his eyes did show clues of impairment. Unfortunately, we weren't able to do the walk and turn or the other one leg stand test due to his left leg injury. So the last thing I offered him is a breath test, which he consented to, and he was above that, over that point 08 mark. So he's gonna come with us for a little bit longer. All right, Bill, one moment. Come on out, watch your step, sir. Oh, we're gonna go this door over here on the left. Have you stand on the right so I can open it for you. Perfect, come on in, I'll have you stand over by that sink. All right, so that guy, he was just uh, barely over, huh? What was the uh, main indicator that kind of gave it away for you? So, again, it's those objective signs that are key when we're talking to people that we pull over, right? He had that odor, slurred speech, red watery eyes, got him out, uh, made sure he qualified for the horizontal gaze nystagmus test, HGN, which he did, performed that, and I saw all clues of impairment. So what horizontal gaze nystagmus is, it's that involuntary jerking of the eye. It's something that is involuntary, so it means that you can't train for it. You can't get ready for these tests. It's just something that naturally happens when uh, alcohol or depressant drugs introduced into the body. We're gonna do one traffic. North Virginia, North McCarran, Nevada. So Mike, what did you see this guy doing? So this motorcycle is taking off at a high rate of speed through the college town, which is 25, they're changing lanes without turn signals, so we're gonna see what's kind of going on. How's it going? How's it going? Hello. Hi. Good, so you're going a little fast, it's 25 out there, okay? And you're not using your turn signal when you're changing lanes in front of a vehicle. You got a license for me? I do. Now, I don't appreciate you revving your engine very high when I'm standing right there, it kind of hurts my ears. License. Thank you. Where are you coming from, miss? Um, Laughing Planet over in Midtown, and I'm headed home. Perfect. So right down here. Okay. Any alcohol tonight, ma'am? No, sir. Any marijuana use or anything? No, sir. Okay. Do you need my insurance, too? No, it's okay. Okay. Are you still up on Vista, Raphael? Yes, sir. Okay. But Listen. Up this road right here. Drive safe, please, okay? Absolutely. Slow down. It's always a 25 right there in front of the UNR. Okay, when you get in front of cars, like I use your turn signal so they know you're changing. You're on a motorcycle, right? right. You're gonna get hurt if they don't see you, okay? Right. It's, truck's gonna be just fine. I appreciate you stopping, yep. okay? Just drive safe, that's all it comes down to. All right, Alrighty. have a good night. 
you know, she was speeding, not using her turn signal. So I just gave her some education, right? She's on a motorcycle cutting in front of vehicles. You know, they might not see her turning. So, you know, she's at a lot more risk of being hurt than the, the truck is. So gave her some education on, you know, going 25 and a 25 and using turn signal whenever you're changing the lane. And yeah, she got a warning, you know. Clearly you didn't see any signs of impairment then? Nope, asked, uh, asked her if she had anything to drink or any other drug use to what she said. No, I didn't see any of those objective signs that we talked about. So I just sent on her way with that warning. So this car was going pretty fast up Keystone near 4th Street. And I was kind of watching it, see how it drives because it caught my attention. I've noticed that it doesn't have a brake light, an out brake light, so we might stop them, just educate them that they have a brake light out. A lot of people don't know they have their brake light out, so I like to let them know. How's it going? Hi. Yeah, you roll this window down for me? How's it going, man? It's good, how are you? Good. The reason I stopped you, miss, you were going pretty quick up Keystone, okay? Oh, okay. And you also have a brake light out, your oh, back right. Me. Did you know that? No. Where are you coming from? Um, I picked them up from the school. Uh, okay, how much have you had a drink? Nothing. You haven't been drinking? No. You've been drinking? I've been drinking. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They've been drinking, That's why we I'm not. Kind of <laughs> okay, I like it, that's smart, and I'm proud of you guys for doing that, especially on a night like tonight, okay? So just go ahead for and get your back right brake light fixed for me. Okay. It's your running brake light, so as you're driving, yeah. your your light's out. Okay. All right. Okay. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you guys. You. Thank you, sir. Take care. So we've had some other good stops tonight so far, besides that one that we already took up. Uh, I got some people out on some FSTs. They passed, which is awesome. Those are the things we're looking for with our driving public. Uh, Mike, you've had a couple good stops too. What do you have with those? Those drivers passed field sobriety tests. They had a few drinks earlier in the night, and they knew they were going to be driving home, so they decided not to drink anymore which is always smart. And the people we did talk to had designated drivers. And, you know, I'm proud of the Reno for being smart tonight. Hey, Reno, so we're back at the station now. Uh, we, wouldn't, we didn't get to film everything, but we did get just two more arrests uh, for the night. So we had three total with a felony probation violation earlier in the evening. Our team total tonight, we got about seven, eight DUI arrests total. Um, not too bad for a Sunday night. So yeah. Uh, if you like content like this and you want to see more of it, one, subscribe, hit the like button if you like that, and then leave a comment below on what units you'd like to see us ride along with in the future. Thanks for riding along, Reno. We'll see you next time.